Hello friends, what's happening? Today we're talking about losing body fat by starving yourself. Basically, I'm going to be picking a block of time every day that I'm not going to eat, and during those hours, I will be starving. Some people call this intermittent fasting. I call it dying a poor man's slow death temporarily. Being completely honest, there's no massive like hormonal magic that's going on with fasting. It's just easier for me to manage caloric intake by going to one meal a day is basically what I'm gonna be doing for the next 21 days. I can deal with being temporarily hungry throughout the day knowing that I have a pretty decent meal on the horizon. I've used this process to cut body fat or lose weight in the past and I've been fairly successful each time I've done it. Probably the most extreme version of this was a few years ago I was training for a powerlifting meet. It was more or less like a strong first kettlebell, deadlift, pull up type of powerlifting me and it was kind of sprung on me by my coach Zach kind of as a last minute idea say hey are you bored do you want to train for something this competition was about seven weeks away and I told him I thought it would be cool to deadlift two and a half times my body weight at the time my current deadlift PR was 405 pounds maybe 415 something like that I was starting to do the math and working out what I would have to weigh in order to be able to deadlift two and a half times my body weight, but it'd also be a reasonable goal to achieve in seven weeks. I was pretty certain with enough dedication and frequent work with the deadlift, I could probably put 20 pounds on my deadlift. The real question would be, could I cut weight from 188 pounds down to 170 and not lose any strength for one, but actually gain some strength at the same time? I thought it was possible, so I figured we'd just go for it and see what happens. So for those seven weeks, I had a very, very strict nutrition protocol. I didn't do one meal a day because at the time I was also, ju I just quit my job and I was running a summer camp during the day just to make ends meet because the gym revenue was nowhere near what it should have been in order for me to pay my own bills. So I was coaching the 5 a.m. class. Kids were getting dropped off. I would spend all day with them until about 2 or 3 p.m. I had about two kids that would stay until 5, 5.30 every day. I would coach the 5 p.m. and the 6 p.m. and my day was usually ending around 8 p.m. I was at the gym for a very long time, 14, 15 hours a day five days a week. I thought skipping lunch during that time would be an absolute horrible idea, not just physically, but mentally. I had about 13 to 15 kids in this class. They were all like between seventh and maybe 10th grade, ninth grade at the oldest maybe. So I decided to do two meals a day. My first meal, don't laugh, this is serious. This is not an exaggeration. My first meal was two cans of sardines and two packs of Lance cheese crackers. I did that every day. It's a pretty good amount of protein. The crackers were just kind of giving me something interesting to eat with the sardines. If you like tuna, I would be willing to guarantee that you like sardines, if not like them even more. For my dinner, it was always a pretty good chunk of beef, chicken, or fish with a pretty dense spinach-based salad. Not a lot of carbs. Not because carbs are the enemy, but I was just trying to maintain caloric input because I needed to cut some weight. I needed to go from 188 to 170 in seven weeks, but also gain some strength. During that time, I was deadlifting probably three to four times a week, doing pull-ups basically every day, doing kettlebell swings, kettlebell snatches every day. I was working out seven days a week, relatively low intensity, but high frequency, and I responded really well to that. During the powerlifting meet, I think, or the TSC, the Tactical Strength Challenge is what it's called. I was able to cut from 188 to 167 the day of on the weigh-ins. Instead of being stuck with 12 strict pull-ups, I got up to, I can't remember exactly, it was either 21 or 22 strict pull-ups. I took my deadlift from 405 to 425. That 425 felt so easy. I kind of wished I would have done 425 for my second attempt. But nonetheless, we reached the goal. And for the, what do they call that? The snatch test. The snatch test isn't like the strong first certified snatch test. It's basically just a five minute AMRAP of kettlebell snatches. I'm wanting to say I did 113 kettlebell snatches in five minutes. My point is, is that I gained strength and I lost weight, lost body fat, 
and I performed optimally. I basically doubled my pull-up capacity. It went extremely well. Now I am at about 189 pounds, just got an in-body scan a little while ago. And not only is the gym doing this Murph Prep Nutrition Challenge, but my church is also doing this 21-day fasting challenge, so to speak. And if I'm being completely honest, it's a pretty soft challenge. I heard some of the people talking in church saying that they were gonna need to pray about it. And you know, it's not surprising. It's not surprising that asking someone to take a meal out of their daily uh, practice is terrifying for some people. But I have actually seen starving people I've actually seen communities that do not have access to food. Uh, I've gone to Nigeria, Dominican Republic, a whole bunch of places where acquiring food is an absolute chore. So I know the idea that people think that they're starving when they're going without food, it ain't real. There's plenty of people who have plenty of excess adipose tissue that their body can feed on for an extremely long time. So this is what I'm gonna be doing for this 21 day challenge that my church is putting on, but also in correlation with this Murph challenge that we're doing. We're gonna be doing a lot of running volume, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, all these things. If you didn't know what Murph was, it's a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 body weight squats, and then another mile run. So in order to get prepared for that, we're gonna be upping the volume on those movements, but also I'm trying to cut some body fat so I feel lighter on the run, I feel lighter on the pull-ups, um, push-ups I've never been very good at anyway, so we're just gonna have to deal with that on its own. But for 21 days, I'm gonna do one meal a day with one caveat. On Sundays, we're going to do no food whatsoever, full day fast. I'll eat dinner Saturday night. I will fast all day Sunday. Monday, I will not eat until dinner time. So technically, I'm gonna start this off with a 48 hour fast. Monday through Saturday, we're gonna have one meal a day, just dinner. I'm gonna prioritize protein, some starchy carbs, and some fruits and vegetables just to get those micronutrients in. The big challenge, and I've already told a couple people that I'm doing this, so I'm kind of held hostage by it. The last seven days, the last seven days after 14 days of that, I'm gonna try to do a seven day fast. In the past I've done I'm wanting to say 70 hour fast, somewhere in there. Honestly, the first day, the first day and a half is the worst. After that, I felt pretty decent. There's going to be some physical benefits to doing this, dropping some body fat, getting more prep for like a body weight type of workout, a high endurance type of workout. Maintaining strength will be the most important thing to try to keep going, but something about the spiritual aspect of fasting is, is pretty serious. And a friend of mine, Jim, that I've served with overseas a little bit. He talks a lot about fasting and the, and the ability to attain direction and be steered in certain directions when you fast because you're basically denying your body the one thing that it has to have to survive. You know, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And I actually know a friend who did this as well that I worked with at Gibson. His name is Luke. I highly doubt you're watching this, Luke. But I watched this guy fast for 40 days. He did like some fruit juice type of liquids. So technically not zero calorie, but no solid food or anything like that for 40 days. The guy lost like 60 or 70 pounds. And after the first few days, it was, it was kind of, I don't wanna say easy, but he seemed like he was doing great. I'm looking for a, maybe a new direction in where I'm going in life. The, the gym is doing great. The team is doing really well. The community is doing really well, but I feel like there's this next level of thing that's on the horizon, and I felt that way for a while. So I'm hoping, praying about this process, this fasting process, if I can get some sort of new direction because the world is so loud. It is extremely loud. Being able to tune that out, tune out the world's issues that are probably not even represented in reality as much as we think. Propaganda, media, it feeds everything we think about and everything we do, and it's almost impossible to shield yourself from it, especially someone like me who's fairly active in you know, producing content in this media-driven world. So the seven-day fast, I'm kind of nervous about, but I'm also extremely excited about what it might bring, not just physically, but up in here. Even if you're not, even if you're not a believer, even if you're not a, uh, you know, a Christian or some sort of, you know, labeled philosophical spiritual person. Most of us believe in good and evil. 
There's a source for both of those. You can see it in the world everywhere. It is all over the place. And I think we're more aware of it now because of our access to media and potentially every piece of information we can find on the internet that you can get from any place in the world. So being able to fast will give your body some sort of pinnacle thought like, I need food, I need food, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Being able to clear that out of your conscious and powering through those urges, I think is where people can make these massive gains in their personal framework. That's what I wanted to talk about today. I'm gonna to be documenting this as much as possible. Side note, I'm basically gutting my entire house. I'm moving back out of the camper into the house. There's a whole new financial plan we've come up with. So I'm also doing that work as well. It's been extremely busy. I'm going to do this anyway. When people wait for situations to be perfect until they pursue something you know, life-changing, nothing's ever perfect. And then when you think it's perfect and you start this new process, something's going to happen. Happens all the time. I was just talking to our nutrition coach, Shelby. This individual was gonna have to go out of town for about a week to help with something. I won't go into the details, but they said that they needed to pause their nutrition coaching because life was getting a little hectic. That's the whole freaking point, is how do you manage your life when things are hectic. Now I'm going to create some hecticness in my life with this fasting protocol. And you kind of use it as an exercise for myself, but also as an example to other people. Anybody can do this. Literally anyone can do it. If you decide to do it, you will get access to the things that I have access to if you can turn the world down. Just keep focused and steady on the task at hand. Cutting some body fat, getting some spiritual enlightenment. That's what I'm pursuing. That's what I'm gonna be doing in the next uh, few weeks. So stick around if you wanna watch it.